Hi, and welcome to Mondays with Marlo. I am so excited to have Kathy Griffin today because, well, we love her. She's adorable, she's funny, but what we really love about Kathy is that she shows us she's a good example for how to be empowered as a woman, how to be strong, how to say what you think, and how to make it in a man's world because you really, you're in a traditionally man's world. Occupation. Oh my gosh, I was walking past Caroline's Comedy Club in New York the other night, a club I used to play all the time, and they had posters on the wall. I mean, they had to have at least 15. Not one was a female comedian. Oh. After all this time. I know, you see, you have to come back to town. It's still out there. Okay, now, we have a million questions poured in for you. Okay. And you'll be surprised at how much people love you. Well, you won't be surprised. Full you know. disclosure, Marla. <laughs> okay, Full good. Full disclosure. All right, well, your first one is from Greg. Yeah. Having come through a divorce yourself a few years ago, any tips for those going through one now? Yes. Um, you really will meet somebody. Because I was convinced that I was going to um, shrivel yes. in all my body parts, not just the <laughs> usual suspects. And I really did think, you know, well, that was it for me. And I guess I'll tell my little jokes and maybe make people laugh. And I, I just really thought that part of my life was over. And I was wrong. Uh, you good. meet somebody. Yeah, you, you do. really do. You do. But you have to put yourself out there. And what, what does that mean? Out okay, there? for me, my whole life is comedy clubs, and I hang out with a lot of gay guys and women. And so I like met the guys that I'm dating now at a food festival. I don't even cook. But why did you go to a food festival? To put myself, here's why. Because I texted, wait for it, share, <laughs> beat, beat, continue. And I said, <laughs> I'm never gonna meet anybody. And then she said, you gotta put yourself in different environments, bitch. <laughs> and so uh, I started looking online and in the papers to see what sort of events were going on. Really? Yeah. And I thought, well, I love food, and I don't know how to make anything, but I love being around it. And then I actually met this guy at like a food and wine fest. See, you're very good for us. That that's very Put good. Put yourself advice. out there. Absolutely. This is from Susie. When your marriage fell apart, everybody's yeah. interested in this. Of course. You had to deal with it and talk about it on your TV show. Did that make it so much harder? Yes, of course. It was shame based, and I was not proud of any of it. Certainly, putting it on even a small part of my life on the D list, and then. Um, you know, I, I felt like ha when you have a reality show, you do owe the audience, you know, honesty. And so when my marriage fell apart, after a while, I didn't say anything, didn't say anything. And I, I thought, you know, really, it was just my ego talking. Right. And I'm not proud of that. But my ego said, you know, I kind of can't stand the notion that I was this horrible harpy or he did nothing wrong. And so I decided to do one interview, Larry mm -hmm. King, and I sat down with Larry. And then I said, OK, I've talked about it. And then I went to do The View. And then Barbara said, well, we're going to talk about it again. And I said, Barbara, excuse me, but I'm a giant celebrity and I will not be talking about topics I don't want to talk about it. And then she said, well, then you can come on the show. And I said, well, what time is hair and makeup? <laughs> so I did talk to two people, Larry King and, and Barbara Walters. <laughs> uh, this is from Geronimo. What tips do you have for women being in control of their finances? I saw something on TV about Susie Orman helping you discover that your ex was stealing money from you. Look, I mean, this is a really serious issue because not only, as you know, more households have female breadwinners, but also, you know, I'm from an era where when I was a little girl, women weren't even in charge of their own finances, even if they were single. So one thing that I really love about Susie Orman, um, she's got a lot of, she's got a great common sense approach, but also she believes in honesty. Yeah. So she'll just go right up to somebody and say, how much do you make? And that might sound offensive or new to people, but the more honest we are as women, the more we're going to know if the guy in the next cubicle is making more than we are. And certainly in show business, I don't know what it is per dollar. I would assume it's at least like 70 cents on the dollar. But um, that's what it is nationwide. So I think the more we talk about it, and it might feel uncomfortable, but there's no shame in saving your money, being conservative, and not making purchases or even life decisions until you're ready to do it yourself and you can financially back them up. So that's your tip for women being in control of their finances, is to sort of lay it out and see where you be are. Be honest, talk to your other girlfriends, right. get them to be honest, mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, really simple stuff like, don't buy stuff you can't afford, don't worry about what the freaking Kardashians have or people have on television, that's not real. And I think you'll feel a lot better if you have the things you can afford and you can sleep just fine at night than you will if you buy some crazy car that you saw on like some reality TV show that you can't afford. Uh, Cindy wants to know, were you the class clown as a kid? Did you get in trouble a lot in school? Yes. <laughs> I, I know, that's a big shock. Class clown. <laughs> it's also how I dealt with bullying, by the way. Oh, yes? Yeah, you know, a lot of people are talking about bullying right now, of course, and um, it's coming to the forefront in a way that I think is going to be kind of healthy. I agree. 
And uh, so for me, I got my ass kicked a few times in Catholic grade school, but eventually- By girls or boys? Girls. Really? Girls, yeah. I remember one time, you know, it was uniforms, and um, I'm not against uniforms, actually. It can be a great leveler. But I remember <laughs> twice getting jacked, once in a park and once on our little school parking lot, and the girls were just kicking me in a, in a circle. And I remember distinctly one time, one of those nuns just walking right by. <gasps> And I thought, okay, you're on your own. And you know, I'm like not a big, strong girl, but eventually I tried to sort of work on my verbal skills. And there's sort of nothing like the first moment you get to put the bully in their place verbally. Right. Because they're just shadow boxing at that point. Right, they don't right. even know what to do with right. a quick comeback. What, what, what were they bullying you about? Were you fat? I was, no, I was the littlest kid. I was so white, they would call me Casper or, um, you know, covered in freckles, really homely and just ugly. Like when I would walk to school every day, the boys would yell out the car, dog, and they would bark no. every day for eight years. No. Yes, I was the dog. That's not true. Rough, rough, bark, bark. You're adorable. Well, now I'm an adorable kitten. <laughs> sex, sex kitten. Uh, this is from Ghost World. Did you find the men you date are intimidated by how strong you are? You know, I um, tend to date younger men, and uh -huh. I think that's why. I'm not really seeking younger guys, <laughs> but I think that it just isn't on their radar as much. Uh -huh. You know, I'm 51, and I think a lot of guys my age grew up like I did, thinking the man's the breadwinner or a woman shouldn't speak a certain way. Right. And I'm a potty mouth. I mean, my act is vulgar. I say whatever I want, so. How old are the guys? Well, the current one is 33. Nice. I think so. Yeah, really. No harm in that. We had John Hamm last week. I really? was ready to leave, really. I mean, I never saw anything so cute. What a cute <laughs> guy. This is from Margie. How come you're always getting into feuds? You know, it really bothers me because I love to watch all this train wreck television, like the Housewives and Bad Girls Club, but in real life, I, I, I don't do it. You know, it's it's... And it's what keeps us down, you know, it's divide and conquer. So what men have figured out and, you know, politically the Republican Party has figured out is, you know, united we stand, divided we fall. So I, I tend to be much more of a girl's girl and I will defend a woman. Um, and I think it's important that we keep doing that. Well, what, is that why you get into feuds? I don't, I don't think I get into feuds with girls, no. unless you count Ryan Seacrest. No, well, what about, what they, Rhonda wants to know, why are you banned from The View, and would you ever go back if they asked you? Oh, are you banned from The View? Yes, I am banned from The View. Well, those are women. How'd you get into hot water with a lot of women? Well, look, Hasselbeck doesn't count. Okay. I'm not sure what she is. <laughs> no, but I, uh, you know, I got banned from The View because they made some jokes about them that they didn't like. And oh. part of what I do is I really do make jokes about people, places, and things, and everybody. And they're from my life. So if I have a story in my act that's from a time I was in the makeup room in The View, then, you know, those ladies may not care for that. Yeah. But that's the deal. You know, there's no gag order on me. Oh, that's good. Well, I mean, unless I'm banned, of course. <laughs> this is from Danielle. She says, you always talk about your mom and your act. Was she a big influence on you growing up? Absolutely. In fact, I'm actually starting my own talk show on April 19th on Bravo, and my mom is going to be on the show. And at she 90, you Ed McMahon? Well, no, because she's 91. Yeah, I right. mean, she can barely stand <laughs> um, without a box of wine. But, uh, but you know, she really is beloved. And what's funny is she doesn't understand that I learned from the master. So yes, I'm vulgar and I go too far and I'm a potty mouth. But you give her a half a box of Franzia <laughs> and turn on, you know, um, turn on Judge Judy. And let me tell you, the fur is going to fly. Uh, well, I interviewed you for one of my books. And you told me how she just would say, who do you think you are, the Queen of England? I mean, didn't you put Who do down? you think you are? What are you being so goddamn high and mighty for, for Christ's sake? <laughs> right. Too high and mighty. You don't have a pot or a window. You don't have a pot to piss in. <laughs> She'll throw the World War II expressions at me without bat an eyelash. <laughs> oh, by the way, my mom also said, if you ever get a uh, moving violation, you should bat your eyelashes. Well, there's, uh, that, there's the era we're talking that's, about. That's right. Is she still doing that at 91? She, <laughs> darn right she is. <laughs> This is from Ted. You criticize a lot of people. How good are you at taking criticism? And you get your feelings hurt if you get a bad review. The worst part is uh, the answer is all over the place. It has no rhyme or reason. One day I let it roll off my back. The other day I'm reduced to tears and everything in between. Yeah. I, I mean, I think I have to take it because it's part of my job. But sometimes the oddest thing will bother me. And then sometimes something else just, I couldn't care less. Well, what's bothered you like? All right, so I'm a big fan of Vanity Fair magazine, uh -huh. and they did an issue about female in comedy, females in comedy, and I just was excluded from the piece. And I saw all my girlfriends and contemporaries on there, and that was one of those cringe moments, yes, totally yes. ego-driven, right. but I was like, 
Okay, that one stings. Well, yes, that's that fair. stings. That's that one fair. stings. I get that. I get that. This is from Betsy. Do you do online dating? You seem so assertive. <laughs> do you ask guys out or do you wait to be asked? I can't online date. I'm too famous. I um, am working on letting the guy ask me out, which is my current experience. But what happened was I put myself in an unfamiliar environment. And then he came up to me and said, would you um, er, like to ever um, er, go to dinner? <laughs> And then I was like, I think that sounds like a date. <laughs> so I said to him, yeah, don't be a douchebag. And then we you lost him. No, he came running back. Oh, good. Well, have you asked guys out? We want to know. Oh, yeah, I have. Absolutely. You have. Absolutely. Good. I don't see any harm in that. No, I don't either. But people want to know. No, I think the only time you can get into trouble is I think a lot of girls, and I know I've done this, you'll keep pursuing the guy that isn't really that into you, like right. that book. Right. So I've done that a lot. Like I keep asking him out and then right. it's never reciprocated. And driving by his house and everything. Stalking, <laughs> light, light stalking. <laughs> uh, Miranda wants to know, what is your new show about and who are you most excited to have on? Well, it's just called Kathy, nice and simple. And it's really going to be a no holds barred hour once a week wrap up of anything from what's been happening in my actual life to what we're talking about at the water cooler to who knows what wedding I've been to or a Hollywood event or a award show I've been kicked out of. <laughs> and, and, you know, I like to keep it as personal as possible, but still be talking about the things that the Bravo viewers will like. And it's great. The Bravo viewer is 80% female, 20% gay male. And, uh, and you know, we, we're not really going to focus on those shows, but we'll focus on the kind of humor that comes out of those shows. And, you know, it's an election year. I mean, that's a bonanza for oh, me. Oh, that's great. That's a bonanza for and me. And it says who you're most excited to have on. You're not having celebrities, right? Rick Santorum. Yes. No, I, uh, I, I'm really not. I'm not having celebrities. I kind of like the Howard Stern model where you got to know Robin and you got to know Baba Booey. And I like that idea because in my real life, the, the people around me, I think, are funnier than any comedians. And so um, my mom, mom will be on there. My assistant Tiffany is on there. And we're finding other people that I think are relatable. I see. Yeah. So I'm not invited then. You're too famous. I see. Too, well. too big. Too big. Yeah. Okay, this is from Blue66. Do you ever worry or you have regrets about revealing too much information about yourself? Yeah, but, you know, once you do, it's too late. Yeah. For example, I um, got a facelift in, like, 2000 or something like that, and I decided to have it, you know, covered by People Magazine and Entertainment Tonight and just be honest about women in plastic surgery. I regret doing that only because to this day... To this day, I have women coming up to me like at the airport and poking my cheek. Oh, is it real? Is it moving? I'm like, oh boy. So, you know, that one is, it, I probably wouldn't have done that again. Yeah. But I have no secret about it. I'll, I'll get a little something, something if I want it. That's right. I love what Cher said. She said, what? if I want to put my, my nose on my ass, it's my body. Whose yes. business is it? Or her tits on her back. That's right. This is from Patty. <laughs> Show business has a lot of setbacks. Do you have any tips? We love tips here. Oh, okay. Do you have any tips? for bouncing back from a setback or a disappointment? I have many tips. Um, some of them might be a little plebeian. Number one, uh, go for a walk. It sounds silly. No, it's good. I'm telling you, I'm a big walker. I walk or hike every single day. And sometimes I do it for typical girl vein reasons to lose weight, but primarily I do it to clear my head. Mm -hmm. If I don't, I can go uh, cuckoo very fast. So that's something everybody can do. You're not gonna probably get an injury. Um, believe it or not, try to stay away from the comfort slash junk foods because you will just feel worse afterwards. So I'll force myself to do a pure juice smoothie or a great salad and it may not be as fun for the moment, but it, you'll just feel better. Uh, you know, obviously I'm a big believer in laughter. So right. whatever makes you laugh, and that's the best part. It doesn't have to be the TV show that people tell you is funny. It can be the person on YouTube. It can be the comedian that nobody else knows you like. It can be a crazy song. Start laughing because it gives you this great sense of, oh, there's a bigger world. That's it's not true, just all about yeah. me. I go to comedy clubs when I'm down. Oh, good for I you. I just love it. Uh, this is from Christian. Do you ever wonder about the life you might have had if the show business career didn't work out? Oh, you mean as, according to my mom, I would live in my car and eat dog food? Because <laughs> I believe that was a 60 Minutes piece a long time ago that, that haunted our said? family. <laughs> yes. Um, hence the saving the money and being friends with Susie Orman. Uh, I, have, I have other loves. What would yours have been? I bet it'd have been a pain in the ass. Is what I would have <laughs> professional, yeah, professional. Punch a clock. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I, I have a love for design. I just can't do it. Right. So I have no aptitude for certain things, but maybe I would be in those fields. Yeah, yeah. Decorating would be nice. Oh, I'd love it. Yeah. This is from Lindsay. 
Was there anyone in your life that you considered a mentor or someone who inspired you to pursue your dream? Absolutely, there are so many. I mean, you're one of them. And um, your whole posse, like when I go out with her and her crowd, <laughs> look out, nobody is safe. <laughs> you know, I'm really, I never thought in my lifetime I would get to know you. And we had dinner with Gloria Steinem and uh, Elaine May and um, Kathy and Jimmy was mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And after this, I'm actually gonna go have a late lunch with um, Glow Vanderbilt. Oh, of course. And so just, and you know, I was talking to Ali McGraw yeah. on email and you know, one of the things that I love is I appreciate these women so much. And by the way, of course, I'm gonna include Moms Mabley and Phyllis Diller and Joan Rivers and my own contemporaries. I watch all those girls, but I, I do tend to look to women more. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, obviously there's a, a million amazing male comedians and legends in any way, icons in any way. But absolutely, I look to these women because they just don't get the credit and may never get the credit that they deserve. So it's good and important to keep saying their names loud and clear. Who, uh, who are some of the young women or the women now coming up that you really you like? You know, it's interesting because one, um, one of the reasons I got into an argument with um, uh, Hasselbeck on The View is that I said, you know, there isn't really a Gloria Steinem for you. I said, for me, she was a worldwide star, but you know, I don't look to the Kardashians to make me my Gloria Steinem. And then Hasselbeck said, you mean like Mandy Moore, who's, who's a singer and actress? Right. I said, N no, I, that's not, no. Um, but no, I, I think that that's very much what our gender needs right. is who's the Gloria Steinem. And right. it's not just about being an activist. It's that I would look at Gloria Steinem and Fonda and you and say, wow, these women have style and they have jobs that also seem fun as well as challenging. And there was really nobody else. There was nobody like that in my world. So I go, okay. And then I have my mom and she's got five kids and how do they come together? So as far as the younger ladies, who do you have your eye on? Uh, I, I was meaning. I was thinking of comics like Kristen Wiig. Oh uh, yes, yeah. there's so many. Yeah, I mean, I love comedian. Kristen Wiig, yeah. and I mean all all the girls. I love Whitney Cummings right. and, and Chelsea Jenny Handler McCarthy. and Jenny McCarthy yeah. and Sarah Silverman. Right. You know, I tend to love the people that get into trouble. Right. So I love Joan Rivers, of course, yeah, I do and too. people that go a little too far. Yeah, I like. No, I do too. Um, your comedy. This is from Anthony. Your comedy style is very gutsy. How do you find the courage to go on stage and do your act? Were you ever scared? I can't help it. Yeah. That's my problem. I can't keep myself away from the microphone. Huh. So whether I'm doing my talk show or doing, you know, a guest on somebody else's show or something, I can't wait to hit that mic. It's, it's the freedom. It's the uncensored nature of it. I have a burning desire to do it no matter what. That's and so great. even if, if I was sad or depressed or having a down day or whatever, nothing would keep me off the road. I love it. Oh, that's wonderful. Love it. Uh, this is from Megan. What trait of yours do you think has most helped you with your success? I think my mom's common sense. You know, my mom was always, use it up, wear it out, make it do. <laughs> I was recycling before recycling was cool. You know, she's got all these expressions. So uh, I was never like really a crazy spender. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I'm a baller, a little, don't get me wrong. But I mean, I um, haven't really lo lost money or if somebody in the family needed something, I couldn't come in and help them, that sort of thing. So right. I would say if you have any kind of success, calm down, you know, don't just go crazy and do a lottery thing where you're like buying, you know, housing complexes and, and land in Maui. Yeah. <laughs> or a network. This is from Claire. How did you first realize that you were funny? Oh, being laughed at? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I was never the funny one in my family. My older siblings were so much funnier. And, and your then dad. Your dad My was dad funny. was genius, and my mom is still very naturally funny. I think maybe in, maybe like in, as a little kid or in grade school, you finally get the other kids in the neighborhood to laugh. Right. Finally. Did, you, did they laugh at you in the house, in your family? No. No, my family just thinks I'm weird, I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is from Jamie. Who's been the biggest influence in your life? Well, like there's mom. my mom, absolutely. I mean, look, I really hit the jackpot because I got to see her do so many things well, and then I got to see her do things I would do in a different way. And, you know, I've never had a drink in my life, and she enjoys the drink. And, um, <laughs> and yet, I loosened up. <laughs> Not like why I did needed to. A, now, why did you never have a drink in you your know, life? You know, there's two You're things. You're Irish, for God's sake. I know. I feel like I'm betraying my own people. <laughs> I, uh, two reasons. Number one, I distinctly remember when I was about 10 years old, I was at the dinner table having, you know, Swanson's TV dinner or something, <laughs> and I, I started choking. And my father instinctively gra grabbed his stein of beer, and he said, take a sip. And I took this big gulp of beer as a 10-year-old, and I thought, my throat is burning. I will never have that again. <laughs> so that was the sort of the physical reason. And I think the psychological reason is pr I probably just always knew, even at a young age, just to not go there. 
Yeah. I mean, I think there may have been a voice even at 10 years old saying, you know what? The rest of the Griffins are doing it for you. <laughs> you don't have to worry. And I don't need to listen up. That's yeah. the problem. Uh, that's the other thing. That's great. Yeah. This is from Linda Puma. Will she be doing New Year's Eve again with Anderson Cooper? Love them together. And is she still friends with Anderson's mom? Were well, you having lunch with Anderson's That's right. Mom. Certainly friends with, with Gloria. And um, I don't know about New Year's. I always love doing it. And they usually ask me to do it about a week out. Oh, really? So yeah. we don't know yet. They make me wait. <laughs> but it's one of the funnest, th most fun oh, things you, I've You're done. adorable together. He I love He blushes it. the whole time. Yes, he does not know what I'm going to do or I say. Know. And I refuse to tell him. I know. It's so much fun. Uh, Nikki Longo wants to know who your favorite person is that you've ever pissed off. Well, I mean, Barbara Walters is really fun to piss off because <laughs> she really holds a grudge in a way that I admire. And I, by the way, love her. So I don't, I don't know about you, but there are now a pretty long list of people that they may not like me, but I like them just fine. Right. And Barbara Walters is one of them. I am excited to see her. If she walked in right now, I'd say, hello, how are you? How's your daughter? How are things going? So that doesn't bother me anymore, whether or not someone likes me. But it's fun to piss off groups. Uh -huh. Scientology All right. is a blast. <laughs> uh, the Catholic Church, always. Um, Fox News is fun. Yeah. Um, Glenn Beck. You know, just people that are, are usually very strident. And like I said, groups. PETA is sort of fun. Right. They're scary, but they're fun. Right. Yeah, groups. You don't, you don't wear furs, though, I'll bet. No. No, you wouldn't dare. And this is from Joyce Waldman. What's your secret for staying in such great shape? I do. I really walk... Uh, or hike or work out almost every day and I just don't eat the crap that I used to because my body just can't take it. Right. It's so, not even that I'm self-righteous about it. I still love, you know, cookie dough and all the bad stuff. But something happened a couple of years ago where my body just went, okay, that's it. What happened? You got sick, you mean? No, I just think by getting older, oh, uh -huh. my body just couldn't take the bags of chips and right. all that stuff. So I just kind of accidentally started eating better. And I really do love working out. By that, I mean walking and clearing my head right. with the music or whatever. And you take a lot of vitamins and stuff? I try. I t you know, I'm good friends with Suzanne Summers. Yes. So she's got me on the um, bioidentical hormone creams. So the hot flashes went away. And, um, oh, that, so that worked. It really worked oh, on me, good. yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're getting the hook here, but let me do a couple more. Skyline wants to know, looking back, what was the most important step you took in your career? Um, I think doing stand-up for myself because when I was waiting to be booked at clubs or theaters, you know, you just couldn't. And so I was with um, my friend Janine Garofalo and um, we had a discussion about what if we rented a theater ourselves and we were kind of the bosses and did it all ourselves and we charged a dollar a ticket and we did. And so we did a show called A Hot Cup of Talk and we would do it for like either Tuesdays of a month or four Wednesdays. In what city did you do this? In Los Angeles at the Groundling Theater on Melrose. Really? Yeah. And it was a great, just, it was just an excuse for us to do stand up. How smart of you. Yeah. And, it, and we just put the show on ourselves like something wow. from an Andy Rooney movie. That's a fantastic. It was fun. Uh, this is from Paula Winters Leslie. Miss Griffin, you are a very funny lady. It takes balls to be a lady comedian, <laughs> and your personality fits that bill. Who gave you your first gig, and did you break a leg or bomb on your first gig? Bomb, of course. Are you kidding? <laughs> My first gig would be probably something like... Gosh, I had a few like in one year, like I had a little part on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and that was exciting to be around Quincy Jones and Will Smith. And then I was in a Roger Corman horror movie, which was terrible, but it was fun to be around him. And then the first time I ever did stand up, the very first time I ever tried stand up, I did really well. And that was the kiss of death. And then I bombed for two years. Oh no. Remembering that first night because it was a fluke and yes. it was first timers luck. And then I had to really learn how to do it. And were you scared then? It was awful. Yeah. I call it ass crack sweat. <laughs> Not just, no, no, ass crack sweat. There's nothing oh, like it. Very specific. <laughs> well, top that, Thomas. Day, <laughs> I could never top you, babe. <laughs> this is from Daisy D. Kathy, what do you want to do in your career that you haven't done yet? This well, is look, the talk show is a big change for me. Yeah. Because the D-list was a camera following me around for six months, hoping I would say something that's funny. So this is like a real job with a real studio. And um, I'm very, very much looking forward to that. And beyond that, I will never get tired of stand-up. No matter where it is, I love doing it all over. You're lucky, though. You really yeah. are. My dad used to always say that when I wanted to be an actress. He said, but you need so many people to do what you do. And you need permission. Yeah, right. He said, all I need is a microphone. Yeah, I love you it. Know? Now, let me ask you, though, um, hmm. 
Well, what's going to be on your show? You're going to have a band, a desk? No, it's going to be it's going to be very chatty. I'm going to run out and start a monologue because I'm so used to starting that. Right. And I'll be off the cuff, whatever has happened to me or whatever I read or whoever I ran into. And you'll have an audience. I have an audience, small audience, maybe right. 75. Right. And then I'm going to have a panel. I mean, anybody from like my neighbor who's just happened to be quirky to my girlfriend's roommate who's just has a great take on life. And, you know, we're going to start to build sort of this little family and um, we're going to talk about anything and the great thing is nothing will be off limits because you know I don't have to worry about catering to this network or this studio or right. we're not gonna book this person because you pissed off this person and we're gonna just let it rip and then we'll do a field piece where I get to kind of go out in the field kind of like Jimmy Kimmel right. and um, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one segment with my mom Maggie because people love her more than me yeah. <laughs> she t she rates higher than I do. <laughs> I'm basically a sidekick on her show and so we'll we'll have Maggie on the show and um, and then we'll have we'll actually tackle one sort of issue a week, uh -huh. like the bullying or women's reproductive rights, which right. you know are going through a difficult time right, right now. And it's a political year, so the political humor a little, and then there's still going to be gossiping about the housewives, and then gossiping about whatever celebra celebrity I pissed off this week. Okay, we have to close, but what? I'm just going to ask you one question. Well, yeah, it was half hour goes like that. Um, most of our audience are women. Yeah, you know, the women over forty. Mm -hmm. So, do you have one little thing you want to tell them before we go? Any piece of advice? Yeah. Well, okay. First of all, I asked my mom when I was a little girl if you could freeze yourself at any age, what would it be? And she said forty, and that shocked me because I really thought she would say twenty or twenty-one. And I said, why forty? And she said, because when you're in your forties, you're still in great shape, but you're so much smarter. So I just want to say. I'm getting my own talk show with just my name on it at 51. Right. So thank you, Maggie, for 40. I personally would have to say 51. But Isn't it's that just great? that's a big change that yes. happened within my generation. Right. So I think that's great. You really do have over. stuff to look not it's even not close. Over, right. It's not over. And you over. get to be smarter. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. And sexier. I can't help that. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. See you. Thank next you. Week.